Right now, my application doesn't really look like the one we saw at the beginning. Well, let's work on this and replace our static code here a bit. I actually want to render lists of items I got on the market. So in my market component here, I'll add a new property to this class, which I'll simply name collectibles, for example. And this should be an array of items we can collect. Now, how might such an item look like? Let's say an item is a JavaScript object, which has a description saying whatever, something, and then a type like book. This is how a collectible should look like in this application at least. Of course, you may configure this in a different way. I created some collectibles in advance and I'm just pasting them in here so that we have some data to work with. So these are my collectibles here. Now I want to output these collectibles here in my HTML template of this component. So somehow I need to loop through them and then render the same code over and over again for each collectible. I'm talking about this list item here. This code should be copied for each item in my array here. Turns out Angular 2 makes this really easy. I can add a so-called structural directive to this list item. Directives are just little commands, so to say, we can place directly in the HTML code, which Angular 2 will identify at runtime and then do something based on the command. Now we can write our own ones, but Angular 2 also ships with a couple of built-in ones. The directive we add here is ng4, and ng4 is just the name of it. The star signals that this is a structural directive. It belongs to this directive here. And between the quotation marks, we write our loop logic. Now the logic here follows the syntax of a for off loop in ES6 or TypeScript code. So the latest version of JavaScript here. The syntax there is let to create a local variable, then any name you choose, item for example, off, and then the name of the array you want to loop through, collectibles. This will loop through all the collectibles and assign each collectible to this local variable item in the current iteration. It will then recreate this list item here as often as needed to cover all the collectibles. Now if I save this and we have a look at this application, once this reloads you will see that it does re-render this four times, which makes sense since we got four items in the collection here. But of course the content hasn't changed. So in order to output dynamic content, we can use string interpolation, one form of data binding support supported by Angular 2. Here, we do this by using double curly braces, opening and closing, and in between we can output JavaScript code, though only one-liners and no block statements like functions or if or something like that. Though you could use ternary statements here. But for now, what I want to output in the batch here is the type of my item, so item.type. So you see, I can access my item variable here directly between this, between these curly braces like if I were in normal JavaScript code. I also want to output the title here. So let me add, or the description to be precise, so let me add item description here. And with that, if I save this, you will see that once this reloads, now we're outputting the actual content of the list. This is how easy this is with Angular 2. Very easy to leap through it, very easy to output dynamic data. All we did here is use the ng4 directive and the string interpolation Angular 2 offers us to output the content directly in the HTML content here. With that, we're of course outputting our list here, but we're not really able to add it to our collection. That doesn't work yet. For that, we need to hook up these buttons here. We can do this by adding another form of data binding. We already saw string interpolation with the double curly braces. This is useful if you want to output something in our HTML code. We also would have data bind or property binding for a similar approach. But here I'm going to cover event binding, which is for the opposite, to get something out of the HTML code of the DOM to listen to events. I want to listen to events happening on this button here. 
And adding an event binding is very easy. You specify the name of the event, here click, and then you put it into parentheses, like this. This is also a syntax known by Angular 2, and it means whenever a click happens, do whatever I now write between the double quotation marks here. Now here I want to execute a method which I'll call on add to collection and add parentheses here too. So this method, which I haven't created yet, will be executed whenever I click this button. Now how do you know which events are available? Well, you can basically look up the default lists for HTML elements, which have all the events like on click, on focus, on blur, depending on the element, of course. And then you leave away the on part and just have the event name, like click instead of on click and so on. So this is how we can listen to an event. Of course, I now I need to add this method to my component body here. So here in my component, I'll add on add to collection, the method I set up in my template here. And you may ignore the constructor and ng on init method for now. The constructor is the built-in constructor every TypeScript class has. And ng on init is a certain lifecycle hook. When a component is created, Angular 2 reaches several phases in this lifecycle of component creation. And this would allow us to execute some code in one of these phases. But for now, let's focus on creating the on add to collection method here. Well, to see that we actually did something, let me simply alert hello here so that we can see that our event listener works. Now, once this page reloads, if I click any of the green buttons, you see the hello alert here. Great, so this is working. Of course, with that, we're still not adding it to our collection though, because for this, we're going to use another piece or concept Angular 2 offers us. We're going to have a look at this in the next video.